What you're looking at here is a guitar amplifier, one that I built over the last couple of days. What makes this guitar amplifier different is that it runs off of batteries. What it is using, as you can see, it's a valve amplifier, but these aren't standard valves like, say, 12AX7s or a 6V6 or whatnot. These are battery valves as used in um, portable radios of the 40s and 50s, before transistors were created or built or were even common use. Portable radios used battery valves. Um, not in the same sense that you know you'd have like a 9 volt battery and plug it in and Bob's your uncle. These actually use several different voltages which I shall explain soon. Anyway, one of the differences um, between battery valves and standard valves like in your Marshalls and your Fenders and whatnot is that they run at much lower plate voltages and rather than having an uh, anode that is heated is it anode? No. Cathode, yes. Cathode that is heated, um, the actual filament itself is the cathode. So these filaments, rather than being 6.3 volts like in your 12A7s, EL34s, 6V6s, 6L6s, etc, 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 are only 1.4 volts. Um, you can use a 1.5 volt D cell if you really want and it's not going to do any harm. In fact, I, I'm going to do that anyway. But um, the total current draw for these three um, valves on the filaments is 200 milliamps with 50 milliamps per preamp tube and 100 milliamps for the output. Um, just to, in case you are wondering, in case, well, let's just in, put a stutter in there just for the sake of humour. Um, this, these two are 12 one, sorry, 1T4s, they're both pentodes. And this is a 1Q5GT, I believe, from memory. Yes, it's a 1Q5GT, and that is an output beam tetrode similar to the 6V6. Unlike the 6V6, like in the Fender Champ, instead of delivering about 4 or 5 watts in Class A, it delivers just over a quarter watt. Which is plenty loud, which is pretty much the reason I built this, because I wanted something I could turn up to 10 or 11, if you're Nigel Tufnell, and not have the cops knocking on the door. Believe it or not, the piddly little 5 watts that the Fender Champ is, is still too damn loud to turn up to 10 without making enemies. And believe me, I don't need enemies. One cool thing also about this amplifier is that the output transformer is actually a PA speaker transformer in Australia and I think in a lot of Europe as well we have the 100 volt line system in America it's a 70 volt line system anyway this is a 5 watt transformer I am using the taps for half a watt 1 watt and 2.5 watts um, from memory they correspond to let me say 4 ohm 8 ohm and 16 ohm. At the moment I've got it connected on the 4 ohm tap, also the 0.5 of a watt tap because I'm plugging into the speaker from my Tweed Champ that I built myself many years ago courtesy of Mojo Tone. But the demo will come soon. Anyway, to the back view. Back view, back view, back view, back view, back view. Can you see that? Let me zoom in a bit and see. Will you allow me to zoom in while I'm it's not going to allow me to zoom in while I'm recording because these cameras are bastard. Anyway, these are the battery connections. The 1.4 volt A battery. The A battery corresponds to the filaments. Um, that would be the D cell, as previously mentioned, um, delivering about 200 milliamps. There's a negative 4.5 volt C battery, which is for the negative bias of the output um, valve or tube. Now in um, AC amplifiers, the bias is there to sort of set it at the, say the class A point where you get an even swing um, both ways. Usually it is a tap off of a transformer or, or even off the main transformer, the B plus winding itself, where it's um, knocked down very low, say to about 40, 45 volts, and that biases um, the output valve. In this case, you have to use a battery. It doesn't have to be anything really high 
current you can you um, in my case I'll most likely use three little button cells it only draws micro amps so it'll potentially last forever anyway onwards we got the ground connection which everything is referenced to and the 90 volt B plus which supplies the plate voltages of all three volts in such a case you can use 10 9 volt batteries in series and um, once again they don't have to be any special batteries they can be the cheapest most piece of crap um, Chinese Hong Kong made whatever is the cheapest carbon battery you can lay your hands on when the thing is running it only delivers only needs about 10 or 11 milliamps tops like turned up to 10 and distorting to all buggery so 11 milliamps out of 10 9 volt batteries in series is gonna last you a bloody long time right and the obligatory speaker connector because there's no point having an audio amplifier unless it's plugged to a speaker because that will defy the purpose and you may as well just not plug your guitar in right anyway back to the front moving all these cables there we go. Am I in shot? Yes, I'm in shot. Guitar inputs. Um, this is the volume control. It gives you clean to crunchy to distorted. It was all buggery. Um, and here is a tone control which I lifted, i.e. stolen from the late 50s Fender Tweed amplifiers such as the Vibro Lux and the Fender Deluxe because it is a simple tone circuit. It is very useful and it sounds bloody great and um, why the hell reinvent the wheel when the wheel is already there working quite fine speaking of wheels let me see no I'm not gonna move it forward I'm gonna move it back I was a bit pedantic in actually wiring this thing up I was just wiring it up as I went so you know the obligatory point to point sort of thing off of a couple of tag strips Are they tag strips yeah they're called tag strips I only had two of them so I had to get bloody creative and stack things on top of each other and have like this whole 3D thing where there's several layers of wires sort of like in the 1920s radios although in the 1920s radios they are bare wire over here is cloth covered because that's what I have and yeah I don't want you know bare wires so close to a metal chassis um, as a safety thing, just in case I've had a couple of beers in me, when the speaker is unplugged, it's going through a dummy load, which is a 5 watt, 10 ohm resistor. 5 watts is plenty. Considering this thing um, delivers only just over a quarter watts, 5 watts is not going to, you know, 5 watt resistor is not even going to get mildly warm. Most of the components are from JCAR, which is sort of the Australian equivalent of Radio Shack in the US. Not that Radio Shack exists anymore as far as I know. But um, yeah, they're one of the few retail chains that still sells electronic components. A um, couple of exceptions here. Um, this capacitor here is from an old radio, as are these two 1 meg resistors, which I accidentally bought the wrong value from the shop so I had to go through my stash but yeah most everything else like the potentiometers the sockets um, not the wire but all the capacitors and resistors these little banana binding posts the quarter inch sockets the knobs the actual aluminium chassis itself they're all from JCAR now one other useful thing these um the holes drilled for the valve sockets, I bought a step drill. I highly recommend them if you're going to be building one of these yourself. If you want to drill holes for valves, that's the way to go. It's low stress, it's easy, and it's not going to rip your arm off if it grips. It's great. It just chews through aluminium like I chew through pizza at lunchtime. Anyway, enough of my talking crap. Oh yeah, one last thing I forgot to mention. It really needs a um, on-off switch, which I forgot to put in, but I will put in later. The only thing you really had to need to switch on and off is the filament battery, because when the filaments aren't lit, the valves are not conducting any current, so that means your B battery is effectively off. So you don't need a switch for that. And as previously stated, the um, C battery, which is probably going to be a few button cells, it's only microamp, so they can stay on in circuit all the time. It doesn't matter. 
So, enough of my yakking second time around. No, I'm going to yak some more stuff here. Anyway, I'm going to be doing a demo next. But instead of batteries, because I don't have any at the moment, I'm using this old BWD Mini, Mini Lab power supply, which my future, my future father-in-law gave me, and I'm very grateful to him because this thing has been extremely useful when it comes to, um, I don't know, building things. You know, you've got 200 volts, up to 200 volts there for um, B plus on the valve circuits. This little power supply section here, you generally use for filaments, and this bipolar, well that's a bipolar power supply, but this one can deliver also plus and minus 15 volts, or negative or positive 30 volts in total if the two are linked. This is great when you can't be bothered spending money on batteries, but that's beside the point. All right, for real this time, I am going to shut the hell up and I'm gonna play guitar. Yes. All right, so here's my first guitar plugged in, which is, um, I'm not sure if we can make it out. It is a Red Sparkle Les Paul Deluxe with P90's pickups. P90 pickups. God, I'm a dickhead. Anyway, volume's turned all the way down with tone right in the middle. Give it a bit. <laughs> Got a bit of gain to it. Nice sounding little thing. The, the pots on my guitar are a bit scratchy, and that's no good. So, in case you didn't guess, that was a bridge pickup. Both pickups. Stratocaster, yes. Stratocaster. Japanese Stratocaster with the blue flower design. Maple neck. Fender, as you can see, as only fenders can be. Um, yeah, standard single coil, well not exactly standard, I've got 69 custom shop single coils in here. Righto! Noticeably more twang being a fender, because that's what fenders do.
you can see when you um well hopefully the pissy little microphone on this camera picks it up all right when you um turn the tone control up on the fender so it's already got a lot of twain to begin with hey <laughs> even the pickups are feeding back a bit slightly microphonic but a ear piercing so um yeah if you really want to um give your audience tinnitus even at lower volume such as this um fender is the way to go i'd probably recommend a telecaster more so yeah and i dropped my pick while i'm being an annoying bastard anyway so that was the bridge pickup bridge pickup middle pickup the neck pickup. But I like the neck. I mean the bridge. Oh didn't that hurt? It's a bit of pain for you all but now you sort of get an idea of what this thing sounds like. If you want to build one yourself, um, I'll include a link to the schematic below. Um, feel free to ask any questions. Oh yeah, and um, as previously stated, the speaker I was using was a little six inch Mojo Tone speaker in my Fender Tweed Champ clone. I'd, um, I don't have my two by 12 with me still living in storage at my parents place because because well this bloody pandemic came along before i had a chance to pick it up didn't it but oh well shit happens i've got a small amp small speaker and um big fun and that's what matters so yeah any questions abuse whatnot even just to tell me to shut the hell up because of my the ability to talk a lot of shit comments are below that's what they're there for and yeah it wouldn't be youtube without abuse would it see ya